everybody. Happy Friday to you and welcome to this really, really extra special Forks Friday Facebook Live. Now, this is not just a happy Friday and I'm going to be introducing our very, very special guest in just a moment. This is actually a very scrappy Friday and to take from the introduction of our special guest's book, the definition of scrappy is made of scraps consisting of odds and ends. Also, spirited, energetic, and resilient, which I think beautifully describes what living a whole food plant-based lifestyle is all about. And also those three words absolutely describe our special guest, the plant-based phenom, Carly Bodrug of Plant U. Hi, Carly. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Forks Over Knives was one of the reasons, one of the main reasons I went plant-based. So this is a huge full circle moment for me and I just love everything you guys do. Amazing. Uh, we love hearing all of the stories of the seeds that were planted with Forks Over Knives and you have grown a beautiful sequoia of deliciousness and health and what we'll be talking about now, extra convenience with zero waste cooking. Um, we are welcoming people from all over the world. I mean, oh my gosh, uh, we have Teaneck, New Jersey. We have Winston-Salem, North Carolina, Prescott, Arizona. We have London, Ontario. Um, we have Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Look at this. We are international. Carly, you brought the whole world to come and take a look at what we're cooking today and what we're talking about about today. Um, I have a feeling that a bunch of these people already know um, who you are. You have taken the plant-based scene by storm, of course, for many, many, many years, but so successfully, especially with these couple of books. For those who don't know Carly, you'll get to meet her right now, but she is a New York Times bestseller. She has a joyously massive presence on social media with almost 5 million followers on IG, uh, over 3 million followers on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, you name it. And we have a number one Amazon bestseller in quick and easy cooking right now, the brand new plant, you scrappy cooking. Also number two in all Amazon cookbooks at the moment. This book just came out three days ago and we are gonna want you to be a new owner of it. Uh, this is so exciting, congratulations, Carly. Thank you so much. I'm so excited about the response to this book. Whenever you put out something new like this, especially when it's more of a niche topic like scrappy cooking, you never know the response, but the plant-based community has just welcomed it with open arms and the reviews have been so wonderful. So I'm super, super amped about how everybody's loving the book. And today, today we are cooking up one of my um, most famous dessert recipes, which is my mousse on the loose. And it uses a very scrappy ingredient. So I'm excited to show you guys what that is. Amazing. I already have that scrappy ingredient all ready to go so that yeah. I can make it as soon as we are done this live. And I'm a big fan of amazingly creative recipe titles. So mousse on the loose. Oh, it looks so good. Um, you're going to find that on page 264 of the book when you order it. Um, I am so excited to get into this recipe presentation. Um, but I have a big question because, you know, it's always interesting. We have different terminology, whole food, plant-based, plant-based, vegan, this and that. And now you are really bringing this term scrappy cooking to the world. So why is food waste and scrappy cooking such an important part of the health conversation? Yeah, so after I published my first cookbook, one of the big reasons I went plant-based was because of the environmental implications of animal agriculture. So I really heard the statistic that up to 40% of all food in the United States goes to waste, which shocked me. But my yeah. in initial thought when I heard this went to, okay, so that food goes to waste, it decomposes, what's the big issue? But unfortunately, it stacks up in landfills and emits a really powerful greenhouse gas called methane. And to put this into perspective, um, food waste actually creates more emissions than the entire airline industry, which was especially shocking yeah. to me. Because I feel like that's all we hear about when it comes to climate change is transportation or you're taking too long of showers when the food on our plate matters so much. So I threw up an orange peel candy recipe on my Instagram one day called it scrappy cooking because I wanted to start talking about food waste and my audience just went crazy for it. So that's when I knew that 
that light bulb moment, this would make a great concept for a cookbook. That is absolutely fantastic. Um, and what a unique way, obviously a very palpable way to get you there educationally. And then to get creative in the kitchen is something that you already do. Uh, tell everyone a little bit about your journey, uh, your culinary journey, which is exciting and inspirational for anyone out there who is just beginning their journey. Uh, I think, Carly, you are a perfect example to show why anyone can adopt this lifestyle and have fun with it. Absolutely. So I grew up on the standard Canadian diet. So same as the standard American diet. I grew up in a small town in Innisfil, Ontario, right. and had never had a vegan meal in my life. And it wasn't until 2015 when the World Health Organization announced that red and processed meat were now classed as group two and group one carcinogens that we as a family were like, wow, why is nobody talking about, why is, why is the Health Canada recommending on their like, pie chart for to be eating meat and dairy every way every day and why is no one talking about the health implications of meat and dairy mm -hmm. my dad was a colon cancer survivor at this time had gone through surgery chemotherapy um was 10 years out now from the diagnosis but no one had ever thought to mention after he had gone through that diagnosis that it what we were eating could contribute to it so we all felt very inclined to start eating a plant predominant diet i was living in a i was maybe 2021 20, living in a really small 500 square foot apartment up in Northern Ontario by myself and had to start teaching myself how to cook plant-based really had never cooked in my life period. And I just started having so much fun with it and was sharing about my journey online. So that's really how plant you started was sharing kind of like my, ups and downs of pursuing a plant-based diet from scratch. And it's just incredible to now reflect because I think a lot of people see me and they assume that I have like a culinary background or whichever else, but that that's actually not the case. And it took a lot of um, imposter syndrome and recipe tests and whichever else to overcome this thought that like I should not be doing this. But I think where people resonate with my recipes is they are truly for home cooks. They're yeah. truly for beginners. They're truly for people who are wanting to eat plant based without really complicated recipes. And we are going to get to learn one of them today. Everyone is so excited to share in the chat. We have Lynn, who already ordered her book. She can't wait to receive it. She loves how organized it is, how easy it is to follow. Terry can't wait for her book to arrive. And Michael wants to know more about this because he just threw out two avocados and he needs this book. You need this book. You need this book. So the big thing about my new cookbook is a lot of people have my first book and it's yes. a well-loved well -loved cookbook. And I think the concern is that this book is going to be like super scrappy, like only scraps used, which is not the case. It has over 150 whole food plant-based almost entirely oil-free recipes. And really the beauty of the book is that the recipes are really adaptable. So my main goal was to empower people to learn how to cook with plants, but be able to make substitutions with the beans they have, chickpeas for white beans. Okay, I have a bell pepper, uh, maybe I'll use a green pepper instead so that they don't have to go out and buy new produce every time they're making a recipe. So really that's the foundation that this, this cookbook is built on. And it has my like signature format where I have the ingredients on the top and the recipe on the bottom. But I'm excited about today's recipe because we're using an ingredient that is so often discarded in plant-based cooking, and that is aquafaba. So that's the liquid in a can of chickpeas, and we're using it actually for a dessert recipe. And what's really cool about this, I, I call the liquid in a can of chickpeas liquid gold because it can be used for so many things. I will use it to bread tofu, it can be used as an egg white substitute, and then the really cool thing we're gonna see today is it it will foam up like a meringue and you can use it for a chocolate mousse or even cookies. So I'm just going to drain my can of chickpeas into a bowl here and then set those aside for a different recipe I'll make this afternoon. Amazing. You know, it, there's just so many ingredients that people just do not think about. They go straight down the drain or straight into the trash. So this is just that extra awareness of how we can really not only focus on health, reduce food waste, we're saving money in the in the meantime, right? Because we are making more with what we already have in front of us. Yeah, the big thing I tell people is like, if the environmental aspect is not gonna get you there from a food waste perspective, the money should. I don't know about you, but grocery prices to me, especially in Canada, have just skyrocketed over the last few years. And when you think about the fact that the average 
household is wasting up to $1,700 worth of food. That's the average, $1,700 worth of food per year. It's just astronomical. And we can really close that gap of the inflation we've seen over the last few years by being more mindful about the food we're buying and wasting and making delicious recipes like this. So I've got our aquafaba there. The first step is melting chocolate. So I've got two bars of dark chocolate. So I believe the exact measurement that we're looking for here is five ounces of dark chocolate. And I like about 60 to 70% dark chocolate for this. And the cool thing about dark chocolate is people will often ask me, where do you find vegan chocolate? If yeah. you look at dark chocolate at just about any grocery store, you'll find that a lot of it is just naturally vegan because yeah. they don't have that, that milk added. We have yes. a question from Buddy. Does it matter if it's salted or unsalted can of chickpeas? Ideally unsalted. I have used salted and it personally doesn't bother me because salt is often a nice um, addition to uh, dessert recipes. It will actually bring out the sweetness. However, unsalted is preferred for something where you're sweetening. Uh, if your cans are salted, a great way to use it again. I have, um, I'm not sure if I use it in a recipe in this book, but one thing I'll often do is when I'm breading tofu. So if mm -hmm. I have breadcrumbs, I'll just use the aquafaba like an like an egg substitute there. So I'm just gonna pop this in the microwave on 30 second increments until it's melted. And the other thing you can do is a double broiler, but we're, we're not gonna endeavor on that today. So I'll be right back. I'm just gonna pop this in the microwave and then we'll start foaming our aquafaba. Yes, yes, yes. And as Carly is gone, uh, you know, we want you to order this book. This is going to be so helpful in your lives. And we also, of course, want to make sure that you are heading into your whole food plant-based journey as easily and helpfully as possible. So we are also giving away a wonderful beginner's guide at Forks Over Knives. Um, we just want you to have all the resources to make your life easy. So in addition to these wonderful questions that are coming in, if you might be interested in this beginner's guide, please comment guide in the comments and we will send you uh, over a wonderful free beginner's guide that you can use in addition to going through all of these delicious recipes and the wonderful education in Carly's book. I had a preview of the guide this morning and it's just incredible. So anybody who is wanting to learn the foundations of a plant-based diet and how to get started, definitely comment guide down below. I'm checking on our chocolate. Check on that chocolate. Um, you know, what I love about this book, and Carly already pointed it out, is this the beautiful, gorgeous visuals. It is easy to read. It's wildly helpful. And this has this whole mise en place photos that Carly was talking about, along with the finished recipe. So not only are you reading the ingredients, reading the instructions as usual, but you have a visual guide that makes it so easy and exciting to dive into making these recipes. I love how you call it like a mise en place. That's, that's a great way to describe it. And guys, if you have my first book, this one is so much thicker. There's so many more recipes and I've had lots of comments about how the photography is more beautiful. And it's very true. I photographed my first book myself, but this one I was able to hire an amazing photographer. Her wow. name is Shabad and she's been um, doing all of her blog photography as well. And I just think it's like very much up leveled and beautiful. So you have that to look forward to as well. One moment. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, Carly, when you come back, we do have one more question. I know we, uh, we're, we're, we're talking about canned chickpeas. But what yeah. about people who are cooking beans from scratch? If they make their own beans and they don't get any aquafaba, or are there any other strategies to optimize that aquafaba, or can something else be substituted? Yeah, so the, the big thing is like the beans need to soak for a while to make the aquafaba liquid. So you can make it yourself. You can use the cooking liquid, but it just, I've tried it, and it doesn't necessarily foam up as much. So this is more for a canned chickpea recipe. I, there's no substitution for this that I know of, but I have an amazing tofu chocolate mousse recipe on my blog that is like a similar in consistency and then also high in protein. So we've got our beautiful melted chocolate there and yes. now it's to foam up our aquafaba. So the key ingredient here to making this stable, because I'll often see people make the mistake of trying to do this without adding cream of tartar. And um, so what this does is it make it stable enough that it will stay thick. So you wanna add, it. a little goes a long way with this, half a teaspoon. Okay. And this will, again, ensure that your 
your aquafaba is going to get really nice and foamy just how we like it you're about to see what i mean so this might be a bit loud hopefully we can still check it, but, uh, we're going to foam this up you can also use a stand mixer if it's if you have one of those I thought it would be fun to do the hand mixer today. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is, we are in the kitchen with you, Carly. Um, and that's what I think everyone loves. You know, some people feel like it's daunting taking a look just at a cookbook and then going, what do I do with this? So to be able to see it in practice, we are getting a full instructional guide on how to make this. Oh my gosh, look at that foaming up already. Amazing, amazing. Um, everyone, uh, this is Carly Bodruck in action, making her moose on the loose, um, from her new book, Scrappy Cooking. Uh, look at this. This is incredible. Okay. So this is getting like a little bit bubbly. And one thing I want to mention is if you're using like very dark chocolate, like say 90%, I would recommend adding, you can add a little bit of maple syrup or sugar to sweeten it. And if you are somebody who has like a sweet tooth, I'm the type of person who really likes like almost a bitter chocolate dessert. Um, if you're somebody who likes something a little bit on the sweet side, you can start intermittently adding a sugar, coconut sugar, or maple syrup throughout this. So as you can see, this is starting to bubble, but we are not there yet. So you guys are gonna wanna mute me again and I'm gonna get foaming. Amazing. We have some people who are asking, what was the last ingredient? What was going on? Listen, um, we want you to be able to, of course, find it in the book. But for now, with this recipe, in addition to commenting guide to get the forks uh, over knives beginner's guide, we also want you to comment recipe. If you comment recipe in the comments, we will send you over this Forks Over Knives article, Carly Bodrug of Plant You shares how to transform chickpea water into chocolate mousse. Um, and we want you to be able to enjoy it. I think desserts are very much the gateway for people who go, this can't be done. It can be done. And I mean, this is how simple it is. We really truly have these three ingredients. We have the aquafaba, we have the chocolate, and we have the cream of tartar. One, two, three it creates this deliciousness that you see on my page, also on Carly's page, and we're seeing it in action. If you are watching, this is delicious alchemy, delicious scrappy alchemy that is happening over here, and I cannot wait to see what the finished product might be. There's so much care that you put into your recipes and your community, Carly. I think that that is what really, really shines um, and makes it feel like, hey, this is accessible. I can do this. I'm going to need just like a minute or two left. But as you guys can see, this is getting like really nice and thick there. And it's really magical. Like it's it's just like what you would get from an egg white consistency by whipping it. And can you believe this comes from just the water in a can one can of chickpeas? So it makes an unbelievable amount of food. So we're just going to do that for one or two minutes more. And then I promise I'm back without this gnawing sound of this and uh, then we'll pour the chocolate in. So <laughs> yeah, no, it's, yeah, you are, you are good. Uh, this is mousse on the loose that we are enjoying. As I said, I love a creative recipe title. Some other recipes that you can look forward to when you get Carly's scrappy cooking book, last week's loaf breakfast casserole. We got the beet chips. Uh, second chance, sheet pan fried rice, raid the fridge noodle soup. How many times do you go, what am I going to make tonight? Carly presents easy options that you can go into your pantry, go into your fridge, throw things together, make a recipe. Again, zero waste, nice and easy. And one of my favorite titles is Rock Your Brock Mac and Cheese, because uh, who doesn't love some mac and cheese with broccoli? In addition to all of those specific recipes, we have so many amazing um, resources, graphics over here. We have a Got This, Make That from Carly's book, which shows you if you have this ingredient, what can you make from it? This solves that problem of needing to go out and get anything. You might already have something in your kitchen or in your pantry that you can put together with just a few other items and make something. Um, and that's the approach that you know we also love to take with our Forks meal planner. How can you make 
Oh, look at how delicious that is. How can you make cooking? And look at how thick and wonderful. So this this is what you're looking for is to achieve stiff peaks. And that's what you'll often hear people talk about when they're making meringue. You want stiff peaks. So it's really like just thick, thick, thick there. And next we're gonna add our chocolate. So I am going to need to pour and whip a little bit. And the, the thing you wanna do here is just like pour a little bit at a time and then just whip slowly. I actually can just stir this in. So Fantastic. Um, yeah, I, I'm i going to uh, get myself a very big spoon because I have a feeling I will be nibbling as I am making it. So you're gonna lose a little bit of like that inflation here of the, um, oh, this looks so good. Yeah. Um, of the foam, but that's okay, it doesn't matter. So you're gonna see, it just that, looks so There we go. Hey, Carly, <laughs> how long does aquafaba stay if someone is uh, you know, gonna be storing their aquafaba for future Yeah, years? yeah, you can, you can store aquafaba like unwhipped in the fridge for up to three or four days. And then I've heard that you can also freeze it. So it's uh, really, you can store it for a while. And then once it's made, you can store it for a couple of days. Yeah. And this, this thickens in the fridge too. So after you're done mixing it, you can set it in the fridge overnight and it will become even more moussey. And this looks like a fantastic recipe that would also be great for bringing the kids in for anyone who has a family that wants to get involved, right? Absolutely. I think it would be, it's like magic, like it's so fun to involve the kids in something like this and super delicious. And like I said, it can be remixed in so many ways. Like you can add sugar, maple syrup to sweeten it up a bit, you oh. could add cow nibs on top. I'm, I'm just really, really excited because honestly, chickpeas, <laughs> and, chickpeas and chocolate are two of my favorite foods. There we go. Um, so to have a whole food plant-based chocolate mousse, if anyone out there has ever said, oh, I'm going to have to start uh, giving up some foods. No, that's not the case. We are just shifting perspective. Exactly. You can still enjoy all of your favorite meals. It's just per perhaps with different ingredients. Um, this is so excited. Um, so we're, we're, we're done our mousse. That's it, guys. Like the, the hardest part of this recipe is the um, the beating because it's like your arm is getting tired. But um, And then I wouldn't remember, a lot of people try and make this with a whisk, which you can do. But man, you need like some big arm strength to do something like this. So I'm just going to transfer to jars. And I love to serve this with like a vegan whipped cream too. Oh, I'm mm. But um, it's super delicious. And it would, again, as far, oh yeah. Go ahead. As far as the mixing goes, if someone doesn't have a mixer, could they use a blender? Blender, it's not going to foam up. You really need a hand mixer. But what I always like to tell people is like, Sure, this is something you might use once a month, but I think they're they're quite affordable, these hand mixers, maybe $20 from somewhere like Walmart, but you can also find them at a lot of thrift stores. So if you're looking for, for one, it's I think it's worth investing in. It makes life easy for anything that you have to whisk like this and dessert recipes, it's fantastic. So I do find it's a worthy, worthy thing to have in the kitchen. So, and as far, yeah, as far as the aquafaba goes, does it matter if it's room temperature or cold or will it work either way? It could work either way. The, okay. big, the big thing, I just use room temperature or cold is just fine. The big thing yeah. is you need the cream of tartar to right. tartar, cream of tartar. Yeah, um, tartar. yeah. yeah because it, it it's what's going to stabilize it and make it stay thick. So I love this. Now, it's oh, going to be, guys, oh my gosh. Isn't that it's cool? really hard not to enjoy that all right on the spot, but how long would it, for someone who has some, some discipline, let's say, how long does this last after it's made? Yeah. So it is best enjoyed immediately. Like it's nice and foamy. It will harden a bit in the fridge. So it'll be like, it's almost like a Mars bar. If you ever had Mars bars before you went plant-based, it gets like a little crackly, but it's delicious still. So you can keep it in the fridge for up to three days super delicious and like i just tasted it it's so rich so decadent i think this would be a really great dessert to serve at like a dinner party or for mm -hmm. kids i think like the fact that you can make such a whole food plant-based dessert it serves for that quickly with so little ingredients that are super nourishing is just a winner it's just a winner so 
That's now, it. Th that's it. Like this recipe is so, so simple. You saw it made. You can make it too. Carly, I know a lot of people um, also have certain intolerances and allergies. And so some people are wondering when it comes to your cookbook, what if they have a soy allergy, a nut allergy, a, a gluten allergy by chance? Um, is everything accessible? Yes. So one of my big things with my books is I like to try and please everybody. So we have nut free substitutes for every recipe that includes nuts. And then we also include soy free substitutes where possible. So this even goes as far as I have a soy free tofu recipe in the book that's made with beans. Love and it. then additionally, one of my favorite recipes in the book is a vegan uh, allergy friendly ground beef recipe that uses sunflower seeds. And it's really awesome. It's completely whole food plant based. It has um, some eggplant, carrot, although you'd never know, great for tacos, pasta sauces, and so much more. So really i try to please everyone and i think that if you get the book and you have one of those allergies that you'll be very pleasantly surprised of how much that you can enjoy amazing and we have a couple other people who oh, are and gluten -free. there we go yeah gluten-free subs too for 98 percent of recipes the only recipes that i don't have a gluten-free subs would be i have a seitan recipe okay you yeah for, and I have a recipe that utilizes puff pastry, which is one of the only recipes that has oil in it as well. Out of the 150, I believe it's like 98% have like oil-free subs or just don't use oil at all. So if you're whole food plant-based oil-free, which I know a ton from the Forks Over Knives community are, you'll yes. really love this book. That is fantastic. Um, for all the people who are asking questions and sharing, thank you so much. If your question was not addressed now, no worries. We will get some answers in the comments later on. And as far as those who want to watch this back, yes, we will have a replay of this available on the Forks Over Knives Facebook page, on the Forks Over Knives YouTube page. Carly, I do believe this is going out to a lot of your followers also. Yeah, I believe this is posting right to the Plant You Facebook page. And if it doesn't, we'll upload it after. I think this was like so fun, so much fun. And I'm so glad that you guys got to experience the magic that is aquafaba. Um, and I'm also just so grateful for the Forks Over Knives team and community who has embraced this book and my past book with open arms. It's really amazing to see the generosity of people in this space when you're launching something and it, it's like it's made my week so thank you thank you, oh. thank you well you made our week finishing it on a happy scrappy friday everyone is sharing so much love in the comments and no matter where you're coming from if you're finding carly's recipe on the forks over knives website in forks meal planner in our spring uh issue of forks yeah. over knives magazine fantastic we also know that you can find so many more, over 140 more recipes in her scrappy cooking cookbook. Carly, where, where's the best place that people can go to get your yes. book? So the cool thing is my book is on sale for over 30% off at most retailers. And people assume that authors know when their books are going to go on sale. We have no idea. So I was elated this week to see it was on sale, the, the on sale week, because I want everybody to save money. So the best place to buy it, scrappycookbook.com has all the retailers. It will have like your Amazon, Barnes and Noble, whichever else. A great way to get the book is also by supporting your bo local bookstores. So if yes. you have a local bookstore call them up and order a copy but anywhere you can get it i'm thrilled it, it all supports me equally so thank you i have so much gratitude to everybody who's picked up or is planning on picking up a copy of the book amazing scrappycookbook.com is where you can get this so you can hold it in your hands and make that delicious mousse on the loose again <laughs> yeah. for those who might be coming in late feel free to comment guide for the forks over knives beginner guide it'll get you right into that easy convenient delicious and helpful whole food plant-based uh, cooking flow. And for this recipe, comment recipe. And that that mousse will just appear, will just appear magically. At your... no, no, it's just like the aquafaba foams. We're going to have the recipe right to your inbox and you can grab the book as well. Thank you guys. Thank this you, Carly. Carly, you are so glowingly genuine. You are so inspirational. You exude joy and care. Um, it was an absolute pleasure to have you on here. We hope to have you on for many future recipes um, to come. That was a blast. Thank you. Um, I'm going to borrow one final time as we say goodbye to yeah. everyone from Carly's book, which you will read when you get it. We are wishing you on this happy, 
Scrappy Friday, mini Scrappy Sunrises, Scrappetizers, Eco <laughs> Entrees, and sustainable sweets in your plant-based future. Bye, everyone. <laughs>